Hello. Hi, hi, Bill. Sorry, did I just miss your phone call? Um, I'm just wondering, can we reschedule? Okay, okay, that's fine. We could we could do it on um, Saturday morning if that's okay with you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. If, if we say, um, I have come up with a title for the photos for you, though. Oh, great! That's that sounds good. Okay, so life solation. Life. Sorry, say that life again. Life solation. How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that sounds yeah. good. So you've got life and solation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I like that, I like that. I feel like that really sums, sums up, sums it up. Um, yeah, I thought you might like that one. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, hi, Bill. Sorry, this is Anna again. Hi. Um, I just maybe to begin with, um, could you just share a little bit about yourself? Uh, it's uh, Bill Moss. I'm 57 years young. Um, I born and bred in Manchester. Um, lived uh, in various places. Um, I did 12 years in London. Um, three years in Sydney. And yeah, I'm back in Manchester now, living uh, in Swinton, and I've been here for a little over eighteen months. It's um, assisted accommodation, uh, but uh, also classes independent living. Um, we have care on call. Uh, we have um, a site manager who's here uh, most mornings. Yeah, I mean. Um, Basically, I moved in here with just the clothes that I had. Um, Salford Housing were able to help me with um, a microwave, fridge freezer, a bed, bedding, towels. Um, so, but I've had neighbours donate bits of furniture. Um, I was able to get um, a reasonable sofa from Mustard Tree, again, another charity. Um, so I've got quite a little cosy little flat now that uh, is mine. <laughs> when I first moved in, I was sort of chatting with residents. Um, they didn't actually know I was gay at the time. Um, so sort of like some things were said, you know, uh, the odd comments uh, about queers and puffs and... Um, so I just sort of turned around and said, right, well, can we stop with the queers and the puffs uh, talk? I said, because I'm an open gay man and I don't appreciate it. And they basically said, yeah, OK, fine, no problem. Sorry to offend. And, you know, the majority of the neighbours have been fantastic. I know as an LGBT person myself, um, there are times in life, depending on... Um, where you are or who, you, who you're having to hang out with, where it seems safer not to give away aspects of your life uh, or anything that gives away your sexuality? Um, yeah, I mean, um, I joined the prison service in the early 80s. Um, so, you know, it wasn't um, good to be an openly gay prison officer at the time. Um, so, yeah, I did hide the fact I was gay, even though I was in a relationship uh, and living with my partner. I don't hide the fact I'm gay anymore. Um, you know, if anybody asks me, I'm clear, yeah, I'm a, I'm a gay man. Um, I have to be careful because um, I suffer with the thing called syncope, um, which basically means I have blackouts. So I always have to make sure that I've got my phone with me just in case. Like the past few months um you're starting okay. to sound a bit muffled okay sorry uh, a bit, uh, maybe i'm just mumbling <laughs> um sorry is it better now yeah that's better okay um in the past few months i think for a lot of people it's been a very tough way to live life I, i've basically more or less um distanced myself from the initial outbreak in march um, I very rarely go uh, further than the local supermarket um, and because I don't want to put myself at risk and I don't want to put other people at risk. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I remember the first person that I'd heard of that I knew who died, and it shocked me completely because um, it was somebody that I'd had relations with, um, and it scared me, you know. So the first thing I did was to go and get tested. Um, and, you know, um, 30 years plus on, um, I'm still HIV negative. What do you feel is the most difficult thing about this year? Um, I guess um, it's sort of living through another pandemic. You know, I sort of, uh, in the sort of early 80s to sort of mid-90s, um, I went through the HIV um, pandemic. Um, I lost a lot of friends, uh, including my then partner, who I was with for five years. Um, and I think that sort of people that didn't, go through um, the first pandemic um, of HIV, um, think that this is just something that, that this, sorry, this pandemic um, is something that it's not going to affect them. But I'm sorry, this is an airborne pandemic as opposed to something that's, that was spread through bodily fl uh, fluids. Um, and, I see people, you know, they're not social distancing, they're not wearing masks, and they're putting themselves and, and other people at risk, uh, but they're not thinking about it. And I think that if, you know, when you've lived through um, a pandemic where a lot of people died, um, you know, you think twice about what you're doing It wasn't so much the, uh, the fear of death. Um, I mean, Henry, my former partner, who died in uh, 91, um, you know, we we sat and we talked about it. You know, what what would we do if he became so ill that he was going to die? I can, I can talk about it, and I don't mind talking about it. You know, I've still got his photos up at home. Um... You know, and so I see him every day. You know, we travelled Europe together. Um, we did one trip where we flew into Venice, um, had a few days in Venice. Then we got the train to Florence, a few days in Florence, and then train down to Rome and a few days in Rome. So, you know, we had some fantastic holidays together. He was a, he, he was an, an amazing guy. Yeah. No, he sounds like a really special character. Like when you described the moment of um, having to kind of confront the idea of an illness that doesn't get better um, and what to do in the moment when it's getting too much and actually talk about death. It, it, yeah, it's a, such a strange experience having to accept uh, this this. This time where things, when time can't go backwards and it can only go forwards. Um. Yeah, I did lose a lot of friends through HIV, um, but it made me a stronger person. You know, I'm not, I'm not scared of death. I'm not scared of dying. Um, you know, it's something that happens to us all. I mean, one one comment I really want to make is just just about the um, the quality of the shots. I mean, I've sp I've been spending quite a, quite a bit of time uh, working through your photographs, um, and I really feel like you've captured something really atmospheric um, in these pictures. I mean, you just there's just no people in any of the shots. Yeah, you know, it it was nice to have a walk out and find you know a new area where you could walk as opposed to, you know, sort of staying on the main roads. <laughs> the area that I knew was sort of wooded, but I didn't realize how massive it was. Um, and this starts at Nelson Fold, um, which is sort of near where the doc uh, my doctor's surgery is. So I had to wander down there, and I sort of had to wander through these paths 
and discovered a massive wooded area. Right, Hello. listen, I'm going to love you and leave you. Yes, so, oh, sorry, I've, we've been talking for ages. <laughs> so, but thank you very much, and we'll be. I'll be in. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be in touch. No problem, um, Anna. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Yep, bye. You're bye, welcome. Bye, bye. Take care. Bye bye.